camera quick. All right, so uh, again, thank you all for joining. We're gonna do this a little different today. I'm going to be uh, doing this painting and walking you through explaining this process step by step. I've been an artist my whole life. I started off doing uh, animation in high school and figure drawing. That was my original career that I wanted to go into. And because, you know, eventually I didn't graduate high school, so I had to think quickly. And at 20 years old, I just started teaching myself how to paint. And that turned into painting live at jazz clubs, nightclubs, you know, at hip hop events, which I'm gonna kind of go into that style today. But that turned into performance painting, which is what most of you may know me for now. But I just wanna have fun doing this. So let's go to the overhead camera. If you're watching this on TikTok or Instagram, you're gonna to wanna to go to the link in my bio. So let's start off with putting a cool color. I'm gonna use the cool color as my, uh, just my sketch color today. So it just, I feel like other colors build up easily on top of that. But take this in right now. This is the last time this canvas will ever be blank again. So this is it. But this is how it starts. So first thing I'm going to do is actually draw this line through the middle of the canvas. This is the center of my body. From there, I'm going to start building out uh, two things. One, what is the direction of my head? So I'm going to just draw this block in this head real quick. And, and then there's two things that I do from this point on. Two things that counteract always in my, my paintings is the eye line or the tilt of the head and then the shoulders. So my shoulders, they're not gonna be even. They're always gonna counteract just a little bit. And then as I go further down my body, my hips can, you know, I'm gonna imagine them going the opposite direction of that. But as long as I have that blocked in where I have the, the eye line, the shoulders, uh, I'm, I can just build on top of that. So again, if you're watching this on Instagram or TikTok, go to the link in my bio so you can see this overhead shot. And so for right now, I'm just gonna start blocking in some of these parts. We're gonna render in some of the, the face. Let's just block in where the eyes are. And the reason why I wanna show you this is because you know, the way that I approach painting is with shapes, uh, whether it's you know one of my large paintings or whether it's something that's uh, smaller like this. But, and I know I post the time lapses quite a bit, but I wanna just break this down and explain the process. If you have any questions, if you're an artist or creator, feel free to ask those questions in the comments. Otherwise, I'm just gonna keep painting and explaining. So I'm imagining, so I am painting this piano player. So I'm imagining his stance. I've already you know, done sort of a preliminary sketch over there. It, I'm not looking at it, but it's just got me familiar with the figure. But now that I've placed the head, before I draw anything else on this body, I'm gonna place the hands because the hands affect the direction and the uh, the structure of my of the um, arms as well. So, so I'm gonna imagine again the structure uh, and the shapes for these hands. I like to stretch out my the fingers, and again, you know, most people when they approach laying down this first sketch this, this is the most important part and i say that because you have to be as free as possible but also very specific in this time right now because everything's going to build on top of this so you want to do yourself a favor and make it free you know um you also notice that i'm holding further back on my brush to give myself more free movement across the canvas. So I'm seeing some questions come in. So you, so someone said you tackle the shading first then. Not necessarily, this is my structure. This is nothing about right now is rendering out. I would consider shading or shadows, but because these, these are like um, notes on my canvas, I'm giving myself a note of, I'm giving myself a note of where the shadows will be in the future, so. Uh, let's see, 
And again, this is just my process. I'm gonna add another hand right about, yeah, the mic's kind of in the way, so I'm gonna do my best to, you'll see me too as I'm dragging my brush across the canvas, I'm constantly rotating it. So what I'm thinking in my mind is kind of like carving. So I'm imagining that this is like a, like a molding something, you know, like it's a, a piece of clay. And when I move, the way that I rotate my brush on the canvas, it's, it's like I'm carving into the surface. So I'm gonna establish some of the fingers here. Again, get all your expression out in this point right here. Because once we start rendering it, we're gonna start getting more fine-tuned with, uh, you know, with what this becomes or who this is. So, uh, Buttercup on YouTube was saying, says, people tell me I draw too many lines in my initial sketch. Do you have any tips on this? Buttercup, I would tell you, do whatever helps you. So, you know, when we're doing the, orig the original sketch of our drawings and paintings, this is the time for us to figure out, does this feel right? So, however long that takes you, if you want to do is you know all these lines, as long as you narrow down and decide on something, that's really all that matters. All right, so now I'm considering. So I placed my. I'm gonna break this down real quick. I did one line down through the center of the figure. I did the eye line, and from that, and we'll fill this all in later. From that my shoulders counteract and my hips counteract from that as well. From there, I place my hands and now the arms will all react to that. So now, now I can see, okay, my, my hands will go, my arms will go about right here. Just gonna block that in. I'm just all about be as free as you can during this process. Um, there are no rules. That's the beauty of all of this. Is you know that's why I love art. Is I get to make up these rules and I get to. But also, what I'm trying to do is explain my process as I'm creating as well. All right. So because he is playing the piano, we do need a. Piano. I don't like straight lines, so I'm going to even add a curve to that. This gives some dimension to the keys. That's a whole other tutorial on just perspective in general. So we're going to, this is, this is how it starts. I don't know how many minutes we're into this, but we're about, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes into this, if that. But this is how it begins, and I really want you to take this part in because everything builds on top of that. I gave myself a few notes. One, the placement of the body, the composition. I gave myself notes for some shadows, eye lines, some of the characteristics, which may change, and also some idea about depth. So not necessarily this isn't about shadow, this is more about uh, give myself a note about what's in the foreground and what's in the background. So let's just get to um, rendering out some of the skin. I'm gonna get some yellow ochre on the palette. By the way, tomorrow, the paint with session that we're doing, I'm gonna be teaching uh, Jack, how to paint Jack and Sally from The Nightmare Before Christmas. And again, I'm gonna break it all down. Much simpler than this, but I'm gonna break it down with shapes, step by step. So on my palette, I never really have any particular order about how I want to do that. It just, I kind of just do what works for me. But again, artists, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. I'm gonna bring this color over here. We're gonna get into the skin tone now. I'm gonna add a little bit more crimson. I'm using yellow ochre. Um, looks like that's burnt sienna.
crimson and white all mixed together. And I'm gonna lay down first a mid-tone for my skin color, so which is the face and also the, um, the hands. But I'm gonna focus on areas that where I left light. So these are gonna be kind of my highlighted areas and I'll go back and leave my shadows later on. But this is how it starts. It's just, I'm just gonna block this in. Very, very, very basic shapes. I know some of you may have seen my uh, time lapses. This is the pace that they're actually created at. So when I first started painting, uh, one of the things that I did to build my name around town is I would go paint live like this, paintings like this, a little bit bigger around the Sacramento area. So that's where I started, that's where I live still. And every Wednesday night, I would go to this thing called Urban Jazz Sessions. So there was a DJ, there was um, a drummer, piano player, and then sometimes there would just be like a, like a stand-up bass would show up, or someone with a trumpet would show up. And, uh, it was, and, and then there was me, <laughs> the, the artist that showed up. And, uh, kind of just inserted myself into the urban jazz mix. But that's, you know, I, I just pulled inspiration from there. I grew up playing the trumpet, so my background was already in jazz music. I love just music in general. And, uh, you know, I just, it was like a, like a world I just felt was me. It, I felt like it was a world that I was happy to be a part of. I was always excited to show up every week. Even, again, when I didn't want to, I still loved showing up. But from there, I started painting live at this urban jazz session every, every uh, Wednesday night at the Fox and Goose in Sacramento. And then from there, there was this DJ that I got to know. His name was Jake Esparza. He started taking me to different uh, nights around town in Sacramento. And from there, like, that's really how my career grew because I met a gentleman who introduced me to the artwork of Denny Dent. His name was Kevin Costa. And then that just completely changed my life. So big thank you to, to Kevin. But also other, I'm gonna add some, by the way, I'm gonna add some purple to this shadow as well. Just so I have a little cool tone as part of what I'm trying to achieve here. I'm just gonna put in one line for the eye, but we're gonna continue to build on this. But this is, you know, the very, very first of many more layers to come. So artists out there, if you get frustrated, if you're like, oh, it's not coming, a, coming along how I thought, just take your time. That's, that's all I could really tell you is be patient with the process. And it'll take time to get comfortable with that. And that's the other part is dedicate yourself to the journey. I'm going to say hello to Joseph M. Rellis watching on... YouTube, welcome to you. Thanks for saying hello. Thanks for using the chat, by the way. We have chats open on YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, and Periscope. All right, so I'm just kind of rendering out this face. We'll come back to this, but I just want to get an idea. I'm gonna go back with my light colors. I'm actually gonna switch over to a smaller brush to get some of these details. This is mm, a little bit smaller. There we go. This this one will help. I'm gonna go back to these light colors. So now I, I started with the mid-tone and then I went with the shadows, and now I'm just gonna go back and forth. Back to my highlights and shadows and so on. So uh, Joseph asked, what am I making? You'll have to, you have to stay tuned to see what this is gonna become. This is 
because we're just going to build up one little highlight at a time. But you know, learning to paint like this is what helped me transition into becoming a performance painter so quickly because I understood the anatomy, I understood um, just how to build a, a structure and a, and a body. So those of you that are wondering, you know, how do you, how do you get better at painting these? Just paint more. That's, that's the biggest secret. And also hopefully you just get more comfortable with, um, you know, it's easy to, to be intimidated by the process because it doesn't look good fast enough. And that's the worst thing you could do to your, yourself is to expect this to be perfect right away and if paintings taught me anything it's taught me patience just how to be patient with this process you know not everything can be fixed with that with an app but it can be fixed with patience by the way I'm leaving this space open here because I want to put some hair so I'm not gonna waste my time and do anything with that Um, there are also a lot of other techniques to approach these paintings, but this is just what works for me. All right, I'm gonna fix that. So we're gonna let that dry just a little bit. We're gonna start down here working on the hands. We're gonna go back to and mix up a mid-tone so that the mid-tone is gonna be the color that we'll build on. We'll build it with our highlights, our shadows, and I'm mixing yellow ochre with burnt sienna, putting in a little bit of crimson red, and then I'm gonna pull a little white in there just to lighten it until I get to the tone that I want. And then we're gonna fill in the areas that I left light, we're gonna focus on those because those are really gonna represent uh, the, the more highlighted sections of the figure. But the more you can approach your paintings by not trying to be perfect right away, you're gonna save yourself a lot of energy that you don't need to spend. So I'm gonna pull this down over here. I'm just imagining that finger being stretched out. There's another one stretched out over here. Everything just counteracting. If, if you think of your figure as a perfectly balanced being, balance means that you have to counter it somewhere else. So that means if something's gonna go to the right, I gotta go back to the left and so on. Even with uh, where the, the hand placement is, I'm thinking about where am I gonna counterbalance that weight on this side of the body as well. So if you're ever wondering, what do I do next? Well, what's, what's the opposite of where you're at now? So I'm gonna fill in some of the mid-tone. I know this area is gonna have a shadow later, but let me just get this in right now. We'll come back to that. And we're gonna move on now to the left hand, which is really his right hand. So I'm gonna mix up some more of this color because I keep running out. And I try, when I do these smaller paintings, I try to, you know, fill in areas with one brush stroke so if I can if you're wondering what size brush to use, I try to do it all in that one brush stroke. So this finger is in the foreground, so I'm gonna fill that in. I'm gonna see a little bit of that finger back there.
Also, another tip I can give you uh, to artists is um, take figure drawing classes. That will help you tremendously. Like, you'll, that's one of the best things that I did early on as well. And early on, because again, this takes time to learn to build up, but early on, I took a lot of figure drawing classes. By the way, I'm gonna connect these shadows. So the shadow from the finger on the top to the shadow here. We can define them later. And uh, we're gonna keep putting in some of this shadow color. I'm going to go back to this hand over here. So those of you that are popping in on TikTok and Instagram, you can watch this overhead view. You can watch this live stream as a link in my bio, which is where all the live streams really happen. Uh, we're streaming live on YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, and Periscope right now. And also big shout out to, I sent this out to my text list. So I have an exclusive text list. If you're in the US and you text Art Life to 58885, it enters you to win one of my original paintings. And uh, I know there's some people watching on there right now. So I just wanna say hello to anyone who's joining from my text list. I appreciate you just taking the extra step. And also we'll be doing a giveaway very soon. I always share my giveaway winners on my social outlets so you can always scroll through my Instagram to see who my latest winner is I usually do a video with them so okay so I got some questions on on TikTok and Instagram and one of the questions was are you using oil paints and no I'm actually using and I'll show you I'll show you all up here first I'm using Arteza acrylic colors so you guys can see that right there I'm using Arteza acrylic colors uh, I use acrylics for uh, numerous reasons. One, because it dries fast and I work quick. So if I need a layer to dry, um, it's already well on its way once I get to it. So I'm using acrylics. Uh, also, someone just asked, do I have any advice for artists? Um, you know, one of the best advice I can give you is just to continue to invest into your value. So the value of who you are, what you can give to others. Um, you know, when it pertains to this particular type of painting, I would say, you know, invest into your, your skill sets because your skill set is also part of what will raise your value to your collectors or to people who you know, want to, uh, to support you. You've got to keep improving. And so if, if you're doing anything like this, like these type of figures, I would highly recommend uh, figure drawing classes. I'm sure there's virtual ones online uh, also I would just recommend just taking any type of classes that where you can learn I mean and the more you learn early on so most of you that are you know younger artists the more you'll be ahead when you get into say you know in your 20s and you want to start doing this professionally you just be ahead of the game so take as many classes as you can and that's whether it's virtually or whether it's in person. All right, so I'm just building up some of the highlights. We're gonna come back and add details to these hands as well. By the way, I would consider this painting a study. This is not a, you know, I would consider it a fine art finished piece, but this is something that I would paint later as a, as a bigger painting. So someone asked on Instagram and TikTok, they said, what are you drawing? And you'll have to go to the link in my bio to see the overhead shot to see what I'm creating. Or you just have to be patient and come along for the ride.
But I originally started my career as a fine artist. So before I became really a performance painter, or that really took off, uh, you know, I had a publishing deal where I was just putting out fine artwork that was like this. It was figurative and uh, with themes, whether it was hip hop or jazz, because that's just what I loved. And um, it really helped me establish not only early on in my career, but also just um, just learning, just getting better at, at painting early on as well. By the way, keep asking your questions on all platforms. So Haley was asking on, on YouTube, Haley W asked, uh, do you have any advice to help paint more freely, uh, not to be so stuck in the details? And that's a great question to ask, yes. Yeah. So if you notice, the way that I'm painting right now, I'm not trying to fill in every little part, holding it up close. So what I do to free myself up is I, I hold further back on my brush like this. And this gives me more freedom to have more range over the canvas. So that's just one tip. I mean, just physically how to help yourself out in that way. I'm actually gonna get some more highlights on this. That's the easiest way to really free up your movements. And then the other part too is, I think, you know, recently I've been drawing a lot with, uh, charcoal sticks so you kind of have to be free when you work with those you don't have a choice but to just be free uh, but charcoal sticks are another great way to exercise those skills I'm just gonna add some highlights to the face and again we'll keep building this one step at a time all right so uh, Brian on YouTube asked how many highlights should one do before finishing the painting? It's really a personal choice, but I would say this, as long as you, it's not just highlights, also what helps highlights stand out is shadows. So focus on, on both of those, and I think that it can be as many or as little as you want. So, uh, so someone else asked on Twitch, I think it's uh, SS, Sniper Blood asks, when's the next class? The next class is actually tomorrow evening at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, and I'll be teaching how to paint Jack and Sally from The Night Before Christmas. Super excited about that. And also the purpose of this painting too is someone asked how do you learn how to paint more freely is you really just have to paint more you know don't approach every single painting like this is your last masterpiece that you'll ever do and that's it I mean you should approach everything like it's like it's your best work uh, like you're doing your best in the moment but don't get so caught up that it keeps you from trying out some new techniques or just being free in the process which is the whole point of why I do these live streams because it actually forces me to paint and to just be free so that person who's asking about highlights we're just gonna keep building these highlights up too I'm gonna go to a smaller brush for this So when I do these highlights or any of the brush strokes, I try to use, I try to do the brush strokes in one stroke so that it does feel free. So that they feel like it's my hand doing the movement rather than me filling in a section. Again, that's just a personal preference. But it's very similar how I paint the large paintings on stage. You know, a lot of those are done in single brush strokes and movements. You'll also see me right now, I'm applying pressure while I'm moving so that there's variations in my brush strokes. It's not just one particular style. This guy's got some very high cheekbones. Put some 
details in the eyelids. By the way, thank you everyone for watching this live stream. I know I've, I never do stuff like this on my live streams, but I just wanted to have some fun today. So I appreciate you uh, just coming along for the journey. So someone asked, uh, that was Sniper on uh, TikTok, she said, how do you do shadows? And so when I'm doing this style of painting where my canvas is white, you've got to build out the shadows. So you can see in my sketch, I kind of just marked off some sections, but um, I don't know the best way to do shadows is, maybe you can start off with like a cool color. That's what I, how I did the sketch originally. And from there, I just sort of like built everything on top of that, but it'll give you a reference later on of where to put those shadows. So I'm coming back with my mid-tone, cleaning up some of my brush strokes that I didn't like. That's what I love about paint is you can always just paint over it if you don't like it. Let's, uh, let's let that dry. We're gonna head down to these hands and add some more highlights. So the reason why I did this on the live stream as well is I, I want you to be able to replay this. So maybe some of you are coming across this right now and you're like, oh, this is cool, but I don't have any of my stuff with me. Totally cool. This is gonna be up as long as YouTube is in business. And I want you to come back and I want you to try this step by step. You pause the video, you know, keep going, come back at it, do it several times. Um, but I just wanna share that, that knowledge with you. Hopefully, if um, you're watching this later and you have questions, just send me a DM on Instagram. I check that more daily. It's also a much easier way to just communicate on social platforms. By the way, these fingers are not anatomically correct, but that's just how I want them to be all stretched out. All right, so someone else asked on TikTok and Instagram, I said, how are you? I'm, I'm doing great. Right now, I'm doing great because I could literally be, there could literally be just my mom watching this right now and I would be totally happy because I'm just doing something that I enjoy, that I love. I know there's more people than just her, but I, I'm happy because I get to do what I love. This is fun. Keep those questions coming. All right, let's let that dry. We're gonna move on to this over here. So I'm just imagining these uh, these hands as shapes, leaving my mid-tone. We already put the mid-tone there. We put the shadows. So I'm going to leave the rest of the mid-tone there and just apply some of the highlights. And we'll keep going with the highlights until we get to, to white. White will be our final color. Until then, let's just keep building up. more details to that later all right let's keep so now we're gonna go start up here we're gonna go all the way down and just keep adding highlights where they need to be drew McFarland, thank you for the love on YouTube I appreciate it and um, yes s snipe ss sniper blood yes the next painting class is on is tomorrow it's we use zoom webinar and you can register at garibaldiarts.com forward slash paint so that's where you would register for the class. All right, let's get more into this. I'm gonna add accent colors later, but I just wanna keep getting lighter and lighter with my highlights. And also we'll come back and do a lot more shadows later on. Let me get some of those folds. I don't know if you can see that, folds from the fingers. This bone at the top of the, the thumb. 
So you're, you can use your hand and your body as the best reference tool. As an artist, you are your best reference. back to this hand over here and we'll work our way down so the other part I want to talk about is just your personal style and how do you how you establish and find your style and I really feel like your personal style is influenced by several things one of those being life experiences so for example I grew up playing the trumpet I grew up playing jazz music so naturally my subject matter, my life experiences are influenced by what I do outside of art, which is why I naturally am gravitated towards creating figures like this or subject matter uh, in this style. I would add to that that the other part that affects your style is going to be your skill set. So for example, my style looks this way, my brushwork looks this way because of Whatever I've learned or even not learned, that's a very important part because what you don't learn also affects your style. But what you learn or what you don't learn will affect your personal creative style. So if you consider those things and you're wondering, how do I change my style or how do I make it better? Whatever, however you want to answer that question. Think about those two things. Think about what are my life influences that affect the subject matter that I'm creating? And, or also what are the skills that I need to learn just to get better at this? Oh, I see. So SS Sniper was asking, when are we doing another one with aim higher? That's what they're asking. Okay, so uh, I'm not sure, but I can't wait to do it again. So yesterday we did a private, um, a painting Zoom class with an organization called Aim Higher, and they were one of, if not the favorite group that I've ever had. And uh, they were so creative, they moved so quickly and learned so quickly. And uh, I don't know when, SS Sniper, but hopefully very, very soon. All right, I think we have enough highlights for now on the figure. I just want to point something out. This is a blank canvas before we started, and I started off with these simple lines and shapes. I held pretty far back on my brush to give myself this loose movement, but I explained early on in the video why I place the head this way, why I place the shoulders this way, or why I place the body and the hands these certain directions. So if you watch that video um, later on, or if you go back and watch this, you'll be able to see what I was talking about. On that note, I actually forgot a whole section of arm <laughs> right here, so I'm gonna fill that in real quick. Actually, that's a horrible brush. The thing is too. Here we go. This is softer. Um, the brushes that I'm using right now, these are synthetic brushes for acrylic paints, and I use these because they kind of last the test of time. Uh, synthetic brushes. I'm always on the go and in and out of my studio, so I don't get a lot of time to like really baby my brushes. <laughs> That's the best way I could, I could describe it. Because, you know, there's artists out there that, and it's all good. That's their personal style. They spend a lot of time worrying about the materials. I just have other things that I want to worry about. So I use synthetic brushes because it gets the job done for me, and also I don't have to baby them as much. And by baby them, I mean pamper them. And by pamper them, I mean, uh, I don't know, wash them in baby orca saliva. Is that it? Thank you again, everyone, watching on YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, and Periscope. You are seeing this from up above, overhead. By the way, I don't know if you guys noticed too that I didn't use any black for the shadows, not yet. So I'm going to use black later on when I really want to get into the details of the shadows, but for now, I didn't use any black. You could use black to 
to make parts of the skin tones darker, but I just didn't want to. All right, let's get, speaking of black, let's get into that. I'm gonna use a super tiny brush to do this. I'm gonna mix in my black, where did it go? There it is. Again, I'm using these Arteza acrylic colors. They're not a sponsor, I just like their paint. Put some black over there on the palette. If you're watching from up above, you can see the palette on this right side of the screen. And also, you can see me. Hello to you. All right. So I'm gonna take this black and I'm gonna mix it in with this the mid-tone. So this is what now I'm, I'm introducing black to the mix. And I'm gonna start defining the bottom of this face. So let's just define the chin first. And when we do that, we're going to add a little bit more shadow. Just going to kind of swivel that out. That's the best way to describe that technique. Um, so someone asked, Skechers Kid45 on YouTube asked, do you have a tutorial to paint like you? This is it. Like, I don't actually don't ever do this. I've been thinking about doing it, but no one's really asked, so I'm just going to kind of put it out into the world, see how it goes, see if you guys want me to do more of these. But um, Skechers Kid 45 on YouTube, uh, you can actually, I believe in real time you can go back in this video, but as soon as this is done, you can set your paints up and you can do this painting along with me. Or you can join me live tomorrow night during my paint list session. It's happening at 5 p.m. You can register at gearbelltheartscom forward slash paint. So I'm going to define some of these features with the nose. Let's get eyelid in here this is like the, the feeling that this feels like it's like carving it's like that's what it feels like I don't know how else to describe it but I feel like there's a, a piece of clay on the canvas and I'm just like etching away at it with my brush and my paint So also, the outside of this figure is going to be blocked in by colors on the outside. So I'm, I don't know if you noticed, but I'm not really worried about um, the details on the outside. I'm going to block this in, and that's just more so, you know, because of the, the style of painting that I'm doing right now. You can do what do what works for you. That's what we're doing today. All right. So I've got some of that. Got some details here done. I do, I did kind of block in a, a mustache on him, so I want to, I did that early on. Now let's do this, it's, ooh, I like this. These are the, the, the creative decisions that just happen in the moment. He's got his, this guy's, he's, let's just say he's, Playing piano at a speakeasy in Mexico City. Let's let's do that. Let, that is that is his story. I do need a name for him. So if you have a name for this gentleman, can you uh, let me know in the chat? Let's put a little shadow under there. But I need a name for this guy. Who is he? Add some 
sideburns here. And then let's put in a little bit of facial hair. All right, so I think someone just named him Mean James Bobert. That sounds like a real person for some reason. But I need, I need help naming him, so if you're on YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, or Periscope, Skechers 45 Kids said we should call him Britney Spears. All right. That seems fitting. Other names coming in, James Scott is another one, all right. Again, that sounds like a real person. I feel like a James Scott's gonna hit us up and be like, hey dude, that's me. All right, we're just adding some characteristics. All right, I'm gonna, I can spend so much time over here, I'm gonna move on for the sake of time. Oh, so on Instagram and TikTok, they suggested Alejandro. This is nice. What is Alejandro's last name? Or is he just like Madonna and Bono's? Alejandro. So we'll start adding some details, some shadows. These details will be maybe the, the knuckles, the bottom side of these fingers, which we'll block in again later. a line on the bottom of this finger but also we're going to connect that shadow to the part below it the finger that's right behind it and we'll do that again to this other finger right below it if you're watching on instagram or tiktok go to the link in my bio to watch this overhead view that is where we're live streaming on YouTube. All right, I'm gonna add a little bit of water to my brush. I'm gonna wet that just so I can get a little bit. Actually, what that does is it brings the uh, the bristles closer together, and I don't get as many bristles that are in places that I don't want them to be. depth to the arm with shadow. And then let's do the same thing over here. Another observation I hope you're making is there's a reason why I'm not spending too much time overthinking this stuff. What I, what I want to achieve here is I want to achieve the gesture, which is his placement, body placement, his movement, and then also want to achieve his his character. So if I'm achieving that, that that's my goal, and, and that's starting to come to life, then I'm not going to spend too much more time overthinking this. So, so a random person on Periscope, that's literally the name, they said, what art gallery is this piece going to and I actually don't show in galleries but it'll be on my website garibaldiarts.com forward slash gallery that's it'll be in my, I guess my gallery and in the uh, the winter we're planning on setting up like a local pickup for prints here at my studio as well so we'll, we'll announce that as that time comes if you want to be the first to know about it you can send me a text you can text art life to 
I know I, I mentioned this earlier, but uh, some of you that watch the other live streams where I'm doing the performance portraits and you ask a lot of questions about how I'm able to do that, I'm able to do that because I do this. So I, um, you know, I spend a lot of time just trying to be a, a better artist, better painter. Um, Random on Periscope was asking, what do you charge? You can actually see prices of collections at gearballyarts.com forward slash gallery and there's prices of collections there. All right, I'm gonna add one more round of highlights and then we're gonna move on to some other parts of this painting. We're just gonna leave him how he is. So let's, um, let me lighten up this arm first. I'm gonna get a fresh brush and I'm gonna put some white in a section that's not around any other color because I just need, actually let's use the Arteza. I think I'm actually out of this. Let's see, nope, yeah, I'm out. We use another white acrylic paint that I have. So let's put the white in an area that there's no other paint nearby. By the way, shout out to Bob Ross for knocking his paintings out in like 30 minutes, his fine art paintings. Definitely not easy to try it. All right, let's start adding some highlights. So we started off with our mid-tone. We, uh, and we just built this thing up one layer at a time. gently and lightly uh, hovering over the, the surface. And what I always do is I always start my movement and then I make contact with the surface. And that allows me to uh, just give like movement in the brush strokes. So I'm gonna answer a question also while I'm painting this. Someone asked on YouTube and they asked, how do you usually get rid of artist block? Uh, so the best way to get rid of artist block is to always create. And I say this because there's a, a famous Picasso saying, and it said that inspiration exists, it has to find you working. And so if you, I, I truly believe this, and I say this from experience, if you just put paint to canvas or, uh, you know, if you put pencil to paper, it, it'll start coming to you, or ideas will start to, come to life and so I just I really believe the best way to get rid of artist block is to just paint just to create that's my that's my best advice uh, all right let's let's do this I want to add just a little bit of uh, definition in his mustache So I, I mixed up a light purple. Actually, kind of a, it's a grayish purple, but it's enough to give a little bit of highlight on his mustache. Because sometimes, sometimes objects that are dark in a painting can get lost in the shadows. So you gotta find a way to bring that out still. And you can use really any color. I'm choosing to use this light gray purple color. I'm gonna just kind of run it through his, his hair right there. We can go even a little bit lighter and add a little highlights. Just using the, the tip of the brush for this. That music is like fitting right now in the wild. All right, let's move on. Let's give him some hair. All right, I'm gonna mix up some of those mid tones again. So the burnt sienna, 
the yellow ochre, and then I'm gonna add some black to this, and then a little bit of white, so it's kinda turns into a dark grayish brown. So Zane Artist was saying, one question, is it okay to do mistakes? Of course! How many mistakes I've made doing this today? A lot. You can't look at them like mistakes. You gotta look at them like lessons. All right, what, what kind of hair should I get? The sketch of the person I did earlier had dreads, but I feel like as, as his face is coming to life, I'm like, he does not have dreads. That is not a, a dread face. But I know he's going to have something interesting going on with his hair because look at his mustache. So I don't think he's going to have too much of a crazy hair cut because I don't know that, that style of mustache. Maybe he's got like this like comb over. Let's do that. <laughs> Another side combed over, over here. So you can see now I'm starting to uh, use the outside color to block in that shape, that ear. And I can even go back after this to add with that skin tone. I want to add more details. All right, what's I like I like the hair. I like the vibe of the hair. It feels like I feel like it fits his personality. I'm gonna add a little bit of white to that same color I was using. So now it's a little bit lighter, uh, brown, gray. I'm just gonna add some details to this. Give it a little bit of a, a wave. Good to me. Let's move on to, uh, let's get this piano knocked out. I'm gonna use a little bit bigger brush and I'm gonna use a similar color, the white mixed in. By the way, Ray, didn't you have somewhere to go? At five? You good? Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't know it was gonna take this long, but I'm just flowing with it. All right, the colors I'm mixing up with this is, there's like a little purple, a little white, and a little black. Kind of need this purplish gray. I'm just gonna fill in this whole area down below. I'm not gonna worry about being too perfect around the fingers that I've already painted because it's paint and I can paint over it. So I'm just gonna block all the same So be sure to lay down a solid base before you start anything. Uh, even if you don't end up painting it that color, this can serve as an undertone to give more depth to your overall image. And one thing that I see in, in paintings, and and not, not that it's bad at all, but the moment I, I know that something is a little bit more uh, amateur or someone that hasn't taken the time to, to build up the painting is you can actually see the white of the canvas showing through in the final painting. And it just, you know, a one way to eliminate that is to just 
put down a solid color like this, fill up your space, and then build up on top of that. There are other techniques you can do to avoid making that mistake. And also, I, I bring that up because when artists want to say, say for example, you want to charge more for your artwork, and the people who are, and the patrons who are buying artwork like that, they're going to start comparing the quality of your work compared to what they've already collected before. And unknowingly, they may think about those type of details as in, well, they, this doesn't have the same attention to detail as the one that we collected the other day, or the same attention to detail as in you know, some other ones that we're looking at over here in this side of the gallery, or in this website. So just take the time to lay down a base color, and we're gonna build up on top of this. All right, add a little bit more white. And I'll do the brush strokes in the direction of the keys. And I'm doing that just to give it some dimension as well. We're just gonna keep going lighter and lighter. So keys are usually made are they? They're usually made out of ivory, right? Yeah. What are piano? Yeah, on, on fancy pianos. On, <laughs> on fancy pianos. Where does is ivory? Ivory doesn't just come from elephant tusks, right? Uh, does, no, it, it pretty much does. That's why they usually use uh, like oh. acrylic or like a sort of um, plastic. Pen. Okay, you guys can't hear him, but um, Ray is educating me on piano keys. So yeah, not all of them are are made from. Uh, Elephant test guys. But they are white and shiny, and I want to give a little bit of a glare. We're going to come back and add some shadows later on. But for now, just, just go a little bit lighter. Just building up. I'm going to move this just like that. There we go. So you see, I'm not cleaning this up. I'm not trying to make this perfect because my color behind it that I'm gonna put over here will do the cleaning for me. So don't even bother with that right now. At least that's what I tell myself. I'm, I'm literally like sharing my thoughts out loud. I'm just not gonna bother with that part because we'll fix that later. All right. That is done. I'm gonna go back and add some shadows to the shadows that the hands are casting on that surface. Again, if there's anyone still watching, feel free to ask a question. I don't know if I scared you guys away or not by doing this, but I'm having fun painting, so. Okay. It's not just my mom watching, that's good to know. All right, I'm just gonna add a shadow being just casted from the hands, the fingers. Just the impression of the shadow. You can see it in that overhead shot on YouTube. Head over to this finger right here. Uh, so I know that there may be some artists watching right now, and I'm just curious, the artists that are watching, what are what is one of the biggest things that you struggle with? Um, just kind of maintaining creativity or maintaining, uh, you know, building your art career. And maybe I can give some advice to, to help you out. So real quick, I have this flat brush seed here and I'm just gonna turn it to the side to get this really thin line. I'm not using a skinny brush, which would be 
probably a lot harder to do these lines, but by just turning it this way, if you can see. And then just continue the motion off the canvas. Let's start right there. Pick it up here. And just keep going. Stop it there. Pick it up. And we're just going to continue this movement. So these are just separating and defining the keys. And then another rule of thumb when doing pianos, the black keys, you go one, two, three, fill that in a little bit. And then you skip and go one, let's give that one some dimension. Two, and then you skip again, and then you go one, two, three. So this one over here would be, and this, I've only learned that just from observing. I don't know why, but just a little pattern I picked up. All right, let's add a little bit of highlight to the top of the keys. Just in one little single brush stroke. Got your highlight there. All right, let's uh, let's block in some of the shirt up here, and then the background, and then some details, and we'll be done. Let's see. All right, let's go with this. Uh, it's like this green. It's gonna complement this purple. I don't know why. Well, let's find out. Let's choose a brush. Let's go with this. So I'm going to paint in the highlights of the shirt, and then the rest we're going to do shadows, and then we'll do a, a color for the background. So let's, let's actually, I'm trying to think. Yeah, let's do this. Mixing a little bit of brown with the green. All right, so a uh, big shout out to Carla Owens watching on YouTube. She says, artist here, I love your work. Watching you for many years, <laughs> not in a creepy way. I didn't take that as a creepy way. I just took that as, it's all love. I appreciate that. All right, let's start blocking in the shirt. Started, this is a blank canvas when we started this live stream and it is just coming to life all together right now thank you everyone who's watching from wherever you are in the world some places that I saw people joining us from Australia from Turkey Mexico, California, wherever you are, thank you for watching. So I'm just going to paint the highlights. I'm not going to go all the way down there because most of that's going to be black later on. I'm just mixing in some brown with the green as well. dark olive look. All right, we will add those details for this. It's got like a, you know why he's in a speakeasy? Cause he's got a deep V shirt. <laughs> I would just assume someone playing a piano there would, would have one of those. Um, all right, let's fill in the shadows now. 
We're gonna go straight for some black. It's gonna mix in with this green. Let's just pull down. By the way, I will post a time lapse of this on my uh, on my Instagram tomorrow. So want to see it. Also, this will just be, you can watch it again, flip through it. Maybe if you get time, you can paint along with it as well. Let's put some wrinkles in the sleeves that are rolled up. Again, I'm going to use this black to clean off the edges of the figure as well. So that that's that's also why again we didn't clean up a lot of the edges early on because I knew I was going to come back with this black. Right, let's add a little shadow here. There's a little pull, a little tug on the shoulder, so we'll make sure that the fabric reflects that. And then actually, we're just going to block this in because... I just want it to feel like it's further back, further away. So someone else said, call him Mario Lester. I kind of like, kind of like that. You know what? Yeah. Mario Lester is his name. All right? I like that. Okay. Let's, uh, let's continue by putting this black down below. We're just going to fill this whole space down here with black, and then we'll just add one color to accent on this side. I'm curious, can you let me know in the comments who's actually still been watching this from the very beginning? Is, is there anyone that actually watches these that long? And it's okay if not. But has anyone actually been watching this from the very beginning still? So you see those from up above, that up above shot. I'm just doing little dips near where the, uh, the keys are to give an indication of shape. All right, let's just go in with that black. This is where I can also redefine the shape of any of the parts of the figure that I like or don't like. So when I used to do these paintings live, this is the technique that uh, that I, I would use, I would establish the parts of the figure, the face and the hands, the instrument, and then the rest I would just kind of flow and fill in. By the way, I am being careful around these hands, but also it's not the end of the world if, if I block it in. So, because I'm gonna come back with one other color a little technique that I like to use at the end of my painting, so just give it some movement and some life. It also helps cover up the mistakes. It's a little secret I'm sharing with some of you. You can see right there, I just really redefined that 
pinky with one brush stroke. Instead of laboring it over early on in the painting, save myself the energy and in one brush stroke defined it exactly how I needed it. Now let's just put a color and accent this and then we'll do the rest black as well. Um, let's see, what color should we do? You know what, no, that's a little too close to it. Oh yeah, let's do the purple. Let's do a light purple rim. There we go. Let's get some more white on the palette. We're getting near the end of this painting. Again, just wanted to paint this live with you just to show you a different technique to create in. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you create in different ways out there. And you know, not only do I love doing the performance paintings, I also know that you know those that type of setup is not always as accessible to a lot of people to try out. But this is really something anyone can do and attempt. Uh, and I really believe that you can achieve it and probably do it better than me as well. So that's why I wanted to live stream this on YouTube today and Twitch and Periscope. And, uh, and hopefully, I, I would love to see someone try this and then tag me in a photo. And just let me know how it went for you. And so Deanna Meyerson was asking me, what size canvas am I working on today? This is a, a 16 by 20 canvas. Deanna, thanks for asking. So again, I'm using this color to block in the figure. And I'm gonna go back again with some of this these hairlines, but just wanted to at least get this in. And then let's do a little bit on the other side over here. So tomorrow I am teaching a virtual paint night class. It's for all skill levels. And we're doing that at uh, 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. You can register at GaribaldiArts.com forward slash paint. So most of you, hopefully, if you're registering at this point, you have materials available and we have a list of whatever you need. You can always hit up the local art store or craft store to get exactly what you need as well. All right, I'm going to start adding some black to this. fun hopefully you've enjoyed this uh, let me know if, if I should do more of this can you guys let me know in the comments uh, for the live streams in the future should I do these at least you know every other week or more often you let me know All right, let's add some black someone else said he looks like an Edgar Kind of like the, the Mario name. For some reason it just stuck with me. We're gonna stick with Mario. You'll have another chance to name some other characters uh, in future live streams. Also, I am using acrylic paints. Um, they're still really wet, so they're mixing pretty well right now. But that doesn't last long. Those of you that work with acrylics, you know that they dry pretty quick. So I'm just using this 
color to go around and see just cleaning up those lines applying pressure with my brush as I move it and rotating it to get those details just being very free to with my brush strokes outside of the figure like this holding further back Back to this color. So yeah, anyone that's uh, you know an artist or looking for another way to something else to learn or new techniques, feel free to watch this video again. Set up your paints. I'm using all basic colors. Um, I will later on. I will change the description to reflect the colors that I was using. But for now, you know, just you can watch, take some mental notes. But I uploaded this so you can try it. You can paint along with me. All right, let me get one small brush to get this section. It's like hiding back here, hiding behind all these parts of the figure. Kind of blending in with the keys a little bit, so I'm going to go back with that black. There we go. Switch that. Yeah, this was a blank canvas again, guys. Um, when we started the live stream. If you have questions about any techniques, let me know. I can do my best to answer them. You can also DM me on Instagram. I'll do my best to answer the questions there as well. I'm just on Instagram on a daily basis, so if you want to follow me there, be sure to catch my daily updates. Ooh, Jacques, Carla Owens came through in the fourth quarter with the fire name. Jacques. All right, Ken. All right, Carla. I was going to call you. Carla, we're going to go with your name. Jacques it is. Seems like I'm so undecisive and changing his name, but you know what? Jacques it is. Look at that. Almost there. Almost there. At the very end, I'm gonna go back and add some details, but I will literally be done in minutes after I finish this because that's gonna happen super quick. But I hope you enjoyed this painting. All right, let's take that thin brush, this thin one, and let's start with some highlights around the rim. I'm gonna get Oh, I just lost the tip of my brush. Mm -hmm. there we go. Also, uh, before you go anywhere, I'm going to post this on my Instagram tomorrow. All right, I'm, I'm ditching that brush. <laughs> Let's go with this one. I'll post this on my Instagram tomorrow, just a time lapse of this whole process. And hopefully if you see it, you're like, oh, I was there. I was watching that live. So I'm going to go around the rim of him with this light color just to clean up some of the edges. Also to define some of the, the parts that uh, maybe got washed out in the shadows. You can see I'm holding a little bit further back. these lines to help define parts of the of the uh, painting that the shadows maybe overtook I'm 
give you some definition in the hair. And then let's just add one more light color. Let's do this green. Almost like a secondary color. So I hope you guys enjoy this live stream. Uh, we're going to be ending this in a few minutes, couple minutes. Just adding these final touches, and then once I sign it, we're gonna end the live stream. So, uh, if you don't already know this, but you can follow me at Garibaldi Arts on all platforms. This live stream will be up and stays up forever on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe over there if you haven't already done it. Right. There we go. Let's go to that front cam real quick. All right, so check it out. Uh, let me get the lighting just right. All right, so there we go. We did something a little different today and I painted this live for you during the live stream. Uh, if you want to also take a, a virtual paint night class with me, uh, I'll actually walk you through step by step. We do things a little simpler than this, but I really believe that you have the possibility to do it. You can register and find out more information about what it is in future classes at GaribaldiArts.com forward slash paint. Uh, with that said, thank you all so, so much for watching this live stream. I had just such a great time doing something different and new. Uh, we'll be live streaming again next Thursday and Friday around this time, around 3 p.m. And uh, that's it for today. So enjoy your weekend. Have a safe, fun weekend. My name is David Garibaldi. Peace.